Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Eric here. And in today's video, I wanna start a new project on how to add weight to an existing statue. Whether you have a 3D print that was printed too hollow and it feels too lightweight, or you have a, a licensed statue, say from Sideshow Collectibles, Prime One Studios, wh whatever company, or whatever the case may be, whether it was 3D printed or something you previously purchased, and you feel like it's too hollow, it's too lightweight, and you wish it was heavier. Well, there's two ways to go about doing that, and that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So as mentioned, we're gonna go over two ways to weigh down your statues to make them more heavier if you feel like they're too lightweight. And this comes uh, a lot for 3D printing. Sometimes we 3D print something and we don't make the walls thick enough and in the end result, it just feels too lightweight. But there are ways to go about, you know, after it was printed to go about adding more weight to it if you feel like you weren't happy with the results. And there's two products I recommend. The first one is gonna be Plaster. Uh, this is Plaster of Paris. You can buy this in basically any home improvement store, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Walmart, wherever the case may be, but it's basically plaster. The other thing that you could use is something called polyurethane. So now polyurethane is basically a liquid. Uh, it's basically resin. So it starts off as a liquid. You mix two equal halves together and it forms a chemical reaction. When the two mix together, it heats up and the bond causes a chemical reaction that hardens the plastic. As opposed to where now the plaster of Paris, it starts off as a powder and you add water to it and then that's what makes it more solid. So when you have a lightweight statue and you wanna add more weight to it, you need to think to yourself, well, which one do I wanna use? Do I wanna use the plaster or do I wanna use the polyurethane resin? basically plastic. So now if you've been following my channel, you know that I've been working on this Shanna the She-Devil. She's a quarter scale 3D print. Uh, she was sent to me, but she is so super lightweight. I am not happy with it. I need to weigh her down so she has a heavier feeling to her. Uh, and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna add some material to the base and I'm gonna add material to her legs. And that's what we'll cover in today's video. So now on this project, I need to decide which one I wanna choose. So now between polyurethane and between plaster, uh, the plaster actually has more weight to it compared to polyurethane. If I fill up the entire base with polyurethane, it's gonna be lighter as opposed to if I filled it up with plaster. So now you're thinking, well, if I wanna add a lot of weight to this you know, base of the statue, I should use the plaster. Well, in this case, no because I need to still key in uh, her body into the base. I need to add a peg, so she pegs into the base. She doesn't have one. So for that case, in this case, I'm gonna say, actually, I'm gonna use the polyurethane because the polyurethane, when it cures, it is a hard plastic, as opposed to the plaster. <laughs> when you're using plaster, um, it's very solid, but it can still crumble. But if I were to fill this entire base up with plaster, it would be fine because it's protected by a outer shell of uh, plastic already that's hard. So if I pack the plaster in there, she would be fine and she would be nice and heavy. But because I still need to drill into the base and add a key, um, I'm gonna use the polyurethane instead because this is um, better to drill into and it's not gonna crumble when I drill into it. So like I said, it, it comes down to your project and what you feel like, you know, what you still need to do to it uh, in order to weigh it down. So now I am gonna use an example of the plaster just for the sake of the video. So this way we have two examples of the two materials and I can show you the strength of each one. So I have this 3D printed Batman. Uh, this was like one of the first things I've ever painted when I got into 3D printing. Um, now normally you would wanna do this before you paint it, but uh, I never got around to adding more weight to him. He's very lightweight, same thing, doesn't even weigh a pound. So for him, because I don't need to do any further work to him, um, we're gonna use plaster on him. I'm gonna drill into the bottom of the base, perhaps the back of him because the base is separate from the actual bust of him. And we're gonna pour the plaster in 
and that'll make him, you know, as heavy as he could be. Um, there's other tricks you can do. You can add, you know, ball bearings, like, you know, little metal BB balls to add more weight, uh, mix it in with the resin and so forth. But for the most part, uh, in today's video, we're going to be adding polyurethane to Shanna here, the, the white 3D printed object. And then on this guy, Batman, we're going to add plaster. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two and how to work with the two materials. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to work on is this 3D printed base. And like I said, it's very lightweight. I need to add more weight to it. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this is it's a nice large surface. I'm going to drill in a hole into the bottom of the base. It's very hollow right now. Uh, once I get my hole drilled in, I'm basically going to be drilling a hole uh, large enough to accommodate the size of my funnel. And we're going to funnel the resin into the base little by little. When you're working with polyurethane resin, uh, you can add it in stages, meaning you can pour. It's better to mix it up in smaller batches. So I'm going to add a small batch. It cures within 10 minutes and it starts to set within two minutes. So you got to work fast. But with polyurethane, it comes in all different kinds of um, um, alternatives as far as like you can get ones that take 24 hours to cure. So it really comes down to how fast you want to work. I like to work quickly, so I pick the quickest drying one there is. But we're going to work in small batches, filling it up little by little at a time uh, using the funnel. Uh, I'm going to make a nice large hole for the funnel. Now, if you had something smaller, so let's say, for example, maybe like an arm. So say we have her arm right here, and uh, I'm not going to weigh this down, but say if I did want to weigh this down, uh, obviously I can't make a large enough discrete hole to accommodate a, a large funnel. So in that case, what you can do is you can use a needle. I should say a syringe, sorry. So you can buy these syringes off Amazon. Uh, they're basically like a one-time use. Uh, you pick up a syringe, they come in different sizes, and you would wanna add a blunt tip needle. Same thing, the blunt tip needles come in different sizes, but I recommend getting a gauge that has a thick enough opening uh, to accommodate a gel type liquid because the resin is very uh, gel-like. It's not very, you know, watery or uh you know so you want something to where the resin can flow through it so pick up some gauges i believe this is like a 14 gauge or an 18 gauge and i'll throw up some pictures on the video to show you uh, a better look at that but for the time being we're going to get started on this base and then afterwards i'm going to show you how to work with the plaster so right off the bat uh disclaimer when working with polyurethane it is a hazardous chemical um, you need to wear protective gloves. You need to wear protective eyewear. You need proper ventilation. I'm actually going to turn on my fan now. This, this stuff is very nasty. You don't want to get it on your skin. You obviously don't want to get it in your eyes. You need to have a clean environment, a sterile environment to where afterwards you could take everything and properly discard it. This stuff is no joke. It is a hazardous material. It is resin. So in an uh, upcoming video, I actually did a repair on a previous uh, painted statue. The leg had a break in it. Uh, and the same thing, like I said, I, I didn't have a large enough area to funnel it in. Uh, I ended up using the syringe. So uh, stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to show you how to uh, syringe resin into uh, a part, which is a lot trickier. And it's a really cool video. I already did the video. I already, you know, worked on the project. I just need to edit it. So hit the subscribe button. You definitely don't want to miss that video. But for now, we're going to be just doing uh, funnels today as far as uh, getting the resin into the actual uh, material, you know, the actual object, the 3D print. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill into the base. This way I can get my funnel in there. And then afterwards, I'm going to suit up to uh, work with the resin and make sure I'm well protected.
So here's a look at the hole that I made to drill into uh, you know, the base to add my funnel. You wanna make sure your object is nice and level. This way when you pour in the resin, it flows through the part nice and even. Okay. All right, so the funnel fits. We got that all prepared and we're gonna get ready to prepare the resin uh, to pour it in. So this is the resin I'm working with today, or it's uh, it's polyurethane resin, or better known as PU resin. Uh, you probably see that a lot if you uh, purchase licensed pieces. A lot of times they use something called PU resin. Uh, that's basically what this is. It's polyurethane resin. Uh, this brand is called Let's Resin. I've never used this brand before. Uh, I usually use this one over here. This is usually my go-to resin of choice. Uh, it's SRC model pro but uh i thought i'd try something out a little bit different today i'm um, working with different resin companies uh promoting them so uh, i figured i'd give uh this company here let's resin a shot and see how their resin works as far as uh curing um you know we're we're not really doing mold casting or anything like that uh, i did do something like that in another video again stay tuned to the channel for that uh but yeah we're just filling in uh already 3D printed objects. So basically this one, it's a 10 minute fast curing resin. Uh, your working time is two minutes, meaning once you mix the two equal parts together, once you mix, you know, part A with part B, you know, the two different bottles together, and we're gonna do little by little at a time, you have two minutes to work with it. Um, usually I find that that's a little bit lower than what you actually have. Usually you have maybe say an extra minute because you're gonna need an extra minute to stir it. It's very important that you get this stuff stirred properly together, otherwise it's not gonna cure properly. So in order to get everything mixed up, I have three cups set up. They're just uh, plastic containers. Uh, I'm gonna put part A into one cup, part B into another cup, and then pour the two of them into the third cup. I'm gonna make sure I have equal amounts in each cup and then pour them into the third cup uh, this way I can keep reusing these two cups and then this one because it'll be the mixing cup it's going to eventually harden up and we'll have to keep using a, uh, a newer cup for uh, the, the pour. So we'll pour it into here. Uh, the plan is to pour it into here and then pour it into the funnel. Okay. So you're going to give your two bottles a good shake. I already did that off camera and we're going to get started. Okay so this is going to be our part B. And again, you're going to want to work in small batches. You don't have to try to fill the whole entire object in all at once. So let's start with about almost a half a container. I probably won't use all of that. So that's our part B. This is going to be our part A. And then I'm just gonna put these two side by side to make sure I have an equal amount. Uh, obviously it helps if you have a, you know, a measuring, some type of measurements on the side, if it's written down or you could do that ahead of time, measure it yourself. I find it doesn't have to be too, too exact as long as it's pretty much close enough. So I'm just gonna do this by eye to make sure the two of them are equally leveled out. And those two are looking to, uh, actually perfect. So what I'm going to do now is set this off to the side real quick. That's why I have enough room to work. Get my third mixing cup. This is the cup everything's going to go into. And like I said, we have two minutes, so we have to work fast. If you don't want to work that fast, you can buy other resins that cure at slower times. They might have something that cures within a few hours. They might have something that cures uh, within 24 hours. So it's up to you how fast you want to work. All right, so I'm just going to double check everything. The funnel's in. Okay. And we're going to pour the two halves into the one cup. Get yourself a mixing stick. You can get like a popsicle stick or something very sturdy. 
These are some wooden dowels. Uh, we're going to mix it for about a minute and then we basically have two minutes to get it into the base before it hardens up. Okay, we got two minutes. So when mixing this, like I said, it causes a, a chemical reaction. You're gonna notice it's gonna start to get hot. Uh, if it's starting to get hot, that means you better hurry up. That means it's starting to cure. And you basically wanna mix this um, until it looks clear. Like right now, it's a little bit cloudy. So we're gonna go around and mix this until it looks thoroughly mixed together. Everything looks nice and clear. It's starting to clear up and then we'll get pouring. And like I said, they say you have two minutes. Definitely spend an extra minute just making sure it's uh, stirred correctly. So we're gonna use we're gonna use three minutes and I can feel it starting to already get hot. It looks like it's mixed together good stick off to the side and we're gonna get start to pour this so now we don't have much time so a little at a time all right and it's in and that's our first batch Get the funnel out. Set that so up to the side. I'm just gonna swirl this around a little bit. Make sure it's getting into all the cracks and crevices that I need it to go. Okay, so I have the base off to the side doing its thing. It's pretty much almost full. It's about a little bit more than three fourths full. Uh, at this point I could leave it like that, but I'll probably just top it off to fill up the whole thing. I gotta see how much resin I'm gonna have left. Uh, but I wanna start this leg. Uh, because like I said, this is going to be the leg that I'm going to insert a key. So she'll have like a metal uh, rod coming out of her knee. And then that rod is going to be what keys into the base. So that's why I'm using polyurethane, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, instead of plaster. Because uh, plaster is solid, but it can crumble. Uh, so being that we're drilling into the piece and uh, you know, I didn't want to drill into plaster. I feel better drilling into the polyurethane. It's more solid. So we're gonna fill this up with polyurethane as well, which will harden to a hard plastic. And I'll show you the end result at the end of the video. Uh, we'll insert a metal key rod, and then that will insert into the base. I'll get everything lined up, drill a hole into the base, drill a hole into the leg, and she'll key in nicely into the base and be held into place. All right, so we're gonna start on this. Uh, I have enough area here to where I feel like I could probably do it with the funnel. Uh, we're going to see. If not, I might have to do it with the syringe. So we'll see what happens. I think I should have enough space to do it with the funnel, though. So let me get this drilled, and uh, we'll get the funnel into the, the hole. So what I do to get the hole started is I, I reverse drill first, uh, basically put the drill in reverse, this way it doesn't tear into the plastic and rip it apart. Yeah. And we're through. Okay, so there's our hole and uh, it's definitely big enough for the funnel. And it doesn't interfere when I have to go key her into her body, so that worked out great. All right, so same deal. We're gonna pour our, our B, our A, and then mix the two, and then we're gonna pour it into the leg. And then after, I'm gonna show you the plaster.
And on this one, I could actually see the leg filling up, so I knew exactly where to start. Uh, that was an advantage of having this printed in white. I could uh, see through it. So I'm just gonna hold that and let that uh, pour a little bit into the foot area. Just let that cure. So that filled up nicely. And already, it already has a nice weight to it again. This is feeling like a good solid three pounds. So I'll set this off to the side and then we'll get started with the plaster and uh, I'll show you the end result of everything. And I'll show you some strength tests of uh, the plaster and the, the polyurethane off to the side, uh, not inside the model. We'll show how, how strong it is and how, uh, we'll show how resistant it is to uh, breaking or you know damage, scratches and so forth. So like I said, resin is some nasty stuff and only work with it if you really have to. Uh, otherwise, plaster, plaster with Paris, it's, it starts off as a powder, you mix it with water. It's basically like working with sheetrock. It's made to repair walls and ceilings, but it can also be used for, um, for molding. There's instructions on the box for molding, it shows you what to do. Um, we're not really molding with it. We're just using it as a filler to make, uh, you know, objects heavier. And because, like I said, I don't need to drill into this guy to add any, you know, keys or metal rods or anything. I just want to make them heavier. We're going to use the plaster on this guy. So I will need to drill into the base just so I have an opening. And again, you would do this before you paint anything, before you assemble anything. Uh, if I had to do this before I started anything, I would have did it somewhere discreetly where... Uh, the base attached to the actual bust. This way you wouldn't see the hole. But no big deal. I'll drill over here and then I can patch it up at the end. It's not a, um, you know, not an issue. Get up in this sink. All right, let's make our hole here. Like he had a lot of 3D supports on the inside. I can see the infill. He either used the infill or he or she uh, used some type of infill. This was, I believe, printed FDM. So I'm wondering if we could even fill this up. It might have been filled up with plastic on the inside. Let me see. Let me go test it with water. I'll be right back. All right, sorry again, guys, that the video is getting <laughs> screwy. Uh, I should have known ahead of time. Um, so I did what I usually recommend, fill it up with water first. This way you can see how much it's holding. This way you can see if it's leaking anywhere. Um, I don't think I saw any leaks, so it's not the end of the world if it does leak. Uh, it held a decent amount of water, but still uh, not that much because the inside is, f is filled in with um, a lot of supports. That's usually not how I support my models. Uh, this is like FDM style printing, not resin. So I really wouldn't have like that many supports on the inside. He might've used like some type of infill. It's where it creates like a, a structure of supports everywhere. So that's kind of blocking most of it and not allowing me to add that much weight. So I could fill it up with the plaster. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do though is also add in some BBs. Basically what you would use for a BB gun, you know, round pellets, they're very heavy and it's a good way to add weight to an existing piece, uh, something like this, like a bust. Uh, you're going to mix it in with the plaster. This way it hardens up and it doesn't sound like, you know, like a rattle can or something. Uh, you know, you could do it with the polyurethane, you could do it with the plaster. All right, so we got our funnel, we have our powder. We're gonna add our water. They recommend using, um, you know, fresh, clean, cold water. I'm using distilled water. I don't think it really matters. I've used tap water before. It's not a big deal. So with this stuff, you have more time to work with it. And the same with the polyurethane. Uh, the pol you know, the PU resin. Um, you know, you, you can get stuff that doesn't cure in two minutes. This way, you have more time to work with it. But uh, the plaster, you have a half hour. So you have plenty of time to sit here and, uh, you know, mix it around, get it to the right consistency before it's going to harden up. And you kind of 
you ever worked with spackling to repair a wall, it's kind of how you want it. You want it like a paste, not too thick and not too thin to where it's runny. So again, I'm going to do this by eye. And we want it a little thick, but not too thick to where I also can't pour it through the funnel. So this this stuff's very easy to work with. Uh, if you mess up, it's not the end of the world. You could always fix it. So looks like I could take my time. I don't have to rush. I don't have to panic. I'm gonna add a little bit more powder, I think, just to make it a little thicker. It's kind of like cooking, uh, like baking a cake. You want to get that batter. To the right consistency. I like making pancakes. You ever make pancakes? It's kind of like making a pancake batter. So this looks pretty good right here. So I'm just going to thoroughly mix it, get all the chunks out, and then we'll get it poured into uh, Batman's base. And then we got to let it sit for a half hour. That's how long it takes to cure. And then, uh, We'll do the strength test between the two. But yeah, this is so much easier to work with. All right, I think that's good. Now let's see if we can get it through the funnel. That'll be the challenging part. I think it should be okay. So let's start off with the BBs and then we'll drop the plaster down on the inside and uh, that'll hold it all into place. Surprise for this video, we're using the addition of BBs. I wasn't planning on doing that for this video, but I guess we're doing it. They're all stuck together here. Let's we'll try that. Good. Okay, there they go. Oh, two fell out. Okay, so if you just put BBs, he's going to rattle. That's not what we want. Uh, so we're going to add plaster to it. I'm just going to get these in to where I'm trying to break up some of this infill. It's really annoying. Okay, let's get this filled up with the plaster. This was probably a bad example to use for filling something with plaster. Like I said, I didn't 3D print this, so I had no idea what was on the inside of this. If I knew it was like this, I wouldn't have used it for this video, but we're already halfway through, so I apologize. <laughs> All right, so let me mix this up a little bit more. I'm probably not gonna get too much in there. It didn't look like that much water went in, but definitely a lot more than what went into uh, the base part. All right, it's already got some weight to it, so that's good. It's starting to spill out just a little bit, so it's probably about as much as we're gonna get in. It's definitely more than what I got into the base. All right, so I'm gonna let the plaster cure, because really what I wanted to show you, I showed you how to get it in, so that's really what I wanted to do with this video. And I wanna sh show you the strength test of how it uh, hardens up between the plaster and the, uh, the polyurethane PU resin. This way you can decide which one you want to use. Um, like I said, I usually like to work with the plaster. As you saw in this example, it's easier to clean up. Um, it wipes right off. I actually have a wet wipe near me. Cleans off very easily. And that's it. it doesn't make the, the mess that a uh, polyurethane would make. So I'm going to let that cure, harden up. It takes about a half hour and then I'll show you the end results uh, at the end of the video.
Okay, so it's the next day. It's been 24 hours and we added some weight to Batman. So now we had to wait 24 hours because even though the plaster uh, takes 30 minutes to harden, they recommend waiting at least 24 hours for the water to fully evaporate from the mixture. Uh, this way you have the full strength. So even though this was a bad example to work with, I wasn't able to add as much weight as I wanted to. Um, it goes to show that things when things do go wrong, how quickly can you respond and fix them? So now with working with plaster, you can see I was able to quickly clean up the mess, wipe them down. Uh, I didn't have to panic. It was an easy fix. Uh, I didn't get as much plaster in there as I wanted to because basically uh, I didn't 3D print this and whoever did put an infill on the inside. It's basically a 3D support structure uh, that fills up the inside of the model. So I wasn't able to put as much plaster on the inside as I would normally do. Uh, most people, when they do 3D printing, they don't work with infills, but some people do. I didn't realize this one had that. So it wasn't a good model for an example of adding plaster, but it was a good example to show when things go wrong, how quickly can you fix them? And with plaster being you're working with water, it was a quick and easy cleanup, and I had plenty of time to do that. To where when you're working with... Uh, polyurethane resin or PU resin. This stuff dries in two minutes, it cures in two minutes, and it is fully uh, dry to the touch within 10 minutes. Although even working with PU resin, uh, I found that the model, and I did the two legs and I did the base, that these were very hot. Uh, the way PU resin works is if you saw in the video, you mix the two uh, batches together and it causes a chemical reaction with heat that makes it um, dry and you know cure and fully hard to the touch so even though this cured within 10 minutes i could not touch these these were so hot to the touch that i couldn't handle them uh for at least a few hours so we did get the two legs done they have a nice weight to them and uh very happy with the result i also did the base here's a look at the base now has a really nice weight weighs maybe like a good five pounds uh, to where in the beginning it weighed not even close to one ounce. So we went from about one ounce to somewhere between three to three to five pounds. So very happy with the results of PU resin. But as mentioned, when working with PU resin, it's a lot messier and it's a lot harder to, quick, uh, to quickly clean up. When you're working with PU resin, the only way to clean up uh, a resin spill is with alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, with plaster, you can use water. So take that into consideration when working with the two types of materials. And speaking of the two types of materials, let's go into a hardness test and see what the two are actually doing inside of your 3D prints, inside of your 3D models, figures, statues, whatever you want to call them. We're going to take a look at what they did to the containers and do, like I said, a, a hardness test, a strength test, and see how much uh, they can withstand any breaks. Okay, so let's take a look. Alrighty, so we have four containers here. Uh, we have two containers of the plaster, uh, plaster of Paris, and then we have two containers of the polyurethane resin or PU resin. So I did two batches of each. One batch is a little bit fuller than the other. Uh, this way we can do like a thin batch to see if I can break it with my hands. And then we just have a, a thicker batch to see how it fills up uh, an object more solid. So let's start off with the plaster. It hasn't been a full 24 hours. It's been more like maybe 15 hours, but it should be for the most part uh, cured and evaporated with the water out of it. So let's first start off with the fuller batch. And you can see how it dried. It dried a little bit more clumpy. It has some air pockets and some bubbles. It's not fully smooth, uh, but I wasn't expecting it to be uh, fully smooth. It's more to just fill an object and make it more solid. So let's get this out of the container. All right, so here's a look at our plaster. So it's definitely hard to the touch. Uh, if I wanna try to break it at this thickness, I was able to break it. Uh, it wasn't easy. I definitely had to put pretty much all of my strength into it, but even at about an inch, I was able to break through. And you can see it kind of looks like, um, you know, basically what it is, like a drywall compound, almost like a sheetrock. Uh, Definitely sturdier than the sheetrock, but 
Uh, it's very brittle. You can see the way it broke. And it can definitely, if you take a metal object, you know, something more solid, you can scratch it off into a powdery substance. But it works great if you're just filling up a, a statue part or something that's already, you know, something that you want to make solid. Because once this goes on the inside of something, you're not going to be pulling, putting full force on it and trying to break it. It's going to have uh, more structure to it. Taking a look at the PU resin, you can see how it dried because this was a fast curing resin. Uh, even the drip marks have some nice strength to them. See if I can break this. So definitely able to break the drip marks because it's a very thin material, but it's still holding up nice and strong. You can see with the PU resin, it dries nice and smooth. No air bubbles. It does dry to a glossy shine. So take that into consideration if that affects your project. Uh, so let's crack this out of the container and do a strength test to this. Okay, and this one came right out. We didn't have to crack the container open. So the outside of this is just gonna be the, a plastic film. So I'm gonna remove this and get uh, straight to the, the more thicker part of it. So this is definitely a thicker uh, batch than what the plaster was, but I can assure you from doing this in experience, I cannot break this even if I tried to break it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I probably won't even be able to break the, the thinner batch. We'll crack that out next just to go over it. But you can see the stuff is solid as a rock. There's no breaking it to where with working with the plaster, you can break it. You can see what happens to the plaster. Okay. So two things to take into consideration when working with the two. Let's break out the thinner batch of the PU resin. Again, I'm gonna remove the outer film. Okay, so now this is almost about the same thickness of my plaster. So let's see if I can break through this. It's a little bit thinner. Okay, so I was able to break through the, the film, but that, that part wasn't really that thick. Let's try for this part here. I would say that would be comparable to the plaster. And I'm not able to rip through that whatsoever. So definitely, if you look at a difference between the two thicknesses, this I can easily crack through, this I cannot break whatsoever. But now here's the thing. The plaster, this container right here, will run you about $10 to where if you're working with PU resin, this stuff can cost you anywhere from $50 to $100 or even hundreds of dollars. So it's definitely more expensive to work with PU resin. But if you need something to where you're getting, you know, the full strength for the inside of your object, it's definitely better to go with PU resin versus, uh, you know, the plaster, which crumbles and breaks. Uh, the other benefit of working with PU resin is doing roto casting. So if I wanted to fill my object, say Batman, say Batman was um, just 3D printed and I felt like he was too lightweight and I just wanted to add some material to the inside of him to thicken up the wall. Uh, the wall thickness of this right now looks about two millimeters. I could take the PU resin, pour it in there and rotate him around and let the resin work its way around just the walls and fully dry and cure within two minutes without having to fill him all the way up. You can do that with PU resin. Working with plaster, you can't do that. I can't rotate Batman and just thicken up the walls with plaster. You could see it'll crumble and fall off. Although you can pack Batman to the top, fill up the whole thing like I did with him right here, and then I'll plug up the hole and fill that with full plaster. So the plaster is cheaper to work with and you can fully uh, fill in an object fully solid for a decent price without you know getting too expensive. So here's what I recommend. 
if you have an object to where you're not doing anything else, other work to it, such as this Batman statue, I recommend working with the plaster. Even though it can crumble, once it's inside the model, the model is hard enough on the outside that the plaster is not gonna break on the inside. It's protected and it adds weight and he's fine. Uh, if you're working with a statue part, such as this uh, leg here, to where I still need to drill into this and add a key, like a metal peg, so she pegs into the base, I recommend working with the PU resin. Uh, if you need to just roto cast something and thicken up the walls, I recommend working with the PU resin. Other than those two reasons though, the resin makes a mess, it is toxic, uh, and you definitely don't wanna breathe the stuff in or get it on you. So that's the difference between the two materials. Uh, you need to figure out what works best for your project, but hopefully this uh, sheds some light and helps you in the future with your project. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned to the channel. I'll still be working on Shanna the She-Devil, uh, quarter scale, getting her ready for paint. There's uh, tons of projects coming to the channel soon with reviews, uh, guides and how-tos, uh, painting projects, building 3D kits, and so forth. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next project. Take care.